Broadcasting from London, Ontario, Canada to the rest of the world, it's Ask the Top. Thank you very much for tuning in to the latest episode of Ask the Top. As always, I greatly appreciate your ongoing support. This is going to be a jam-packed program. There's a lot of industry news and rumors to cover. New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor, are set to take over the world's most famous arena. I'll let you know when. That's the most intriguing part. Brock Lesnar jumping back to the UFC. Dissension in the Bullet Club. Who should be in the WWE Hall of Fame and predictions for Extreme Rules? You can listen to new episodes of Ask the Top on my YouTube channel. Subscribe to me on there if you haven't. Tell your friends and family to do the same. YouTube.com forward slash Chris Toplack. I'm on Spreaker.com now, which could open the floodgates to Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many other different platforms. TWM.news and the reaction room.com. You want to interact with me on social media? Easy to find. Ask the Top is my Facebook fan page. At Chris Toplack on Twitter. At Chris Toplack on Instagram, though it has nothing to do with wrestling most of the time. And Google Plus. You can find me on there too. I have a beer in front of me. It's a summer one. I'm going to open this right now. Haven't had this in a while, probably since about 2013. Sad that I know the exact year, but I consume a lot of beer. Samuel Adams Summer Ale. Limited time only. First sip. Cheers. I can taste the citrus. Very crisp. Refreshing. This would be perfect on a hot day. As I sit in air conditioning. But we have a hot program. I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's jump into some industry news and rumors. This is breaking news. This occurred about 40 minutes ago. Recording this at 641 on Thursday. I don't do any editing. Literally, by the end of the program, I upload it as quickly as I can to get it out there for mass consumption. The breaking news, Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling are going to be hosting G1 Supercard at Madison Square Garden on Saturday, April the 6th. Why is that a noteworthy date? Well, for those keeping track, that's WrestleMania weekend. WrestleMania 35 is taking place at the MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. So the night before, just down the road, you're going to have the G1 Supercard. Oh, that's amazing. Plus, that's going to be competing with NXT as well. Man, if you're a diehard wrestling fan, which show do you watch? Very smart idea to piggyback off the success of WrestleMania. Really, in terms of the attention and the fact there's going to be so many pro wrestling fans in New Jersey, in New York. It's a great move. Will they sell out Madison Square Garden? I don't believe so. That'd be about 20,000 people. So I believe the chances are highly unlikely, but... They could still draw north of 10,000. They did it in Chicago for All In. They could do it here. More details at ROHWrestling.com. Speaking of New Japan Pro Wrestling, in case you missed it, the G1 special took place last weekend. Let me catch up quickly with some of the noteworthy moments that transpired. So the G1 special took place at the Cow Palace in San Francisco. Drew just north of 6,000, which apparently they paid quite a bit of money to be there for. So it it drew quite well in terms of the the house numbers, in terms of the revenue. It was all great. Former NXT superstar CJ Parker, now known as Juice Robinson, he won the IWGP United States Championship from Jay Switchblade White. If you haven't seen his work since leaving NXT, it's really a remarkable transformation, and he's one of the best promos in the business today. Kenny Omega. Defeated the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, or simply known as Cody, to retain the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Dissension in the Bullet Club, Haku, Tamatanga, Tamaloa, they turned on the Bullet Club and revealed Firing Squad t-shirts. So it looks like they're going to be breaking apart. 
Brock Lesnar returning to the UFC. That was revealed the same night, UFC 226. Daniel Cormier defeated Stipe Miocic to become the UFC heavyweight champion. That's noteworthy because Daniel Cormier is already the light heavyweight champion. So now he has two championships simultaneously. The only other man to do that pop quiz would be Conor McGregor. During his post-fight interview, Cormier immediately called out Brock Lesnar, who entered the octagon and promptly shoved the new champ. Brock tore down Francis Naganu, Stipe Miocic, before telling Cormier, I'm coming for you, mother effer. According to Dana White, a fight between the two is on deck. Just not sure when it's going to take place. I've heard some rumblings. This could be February of next year. But Brock is free and clear to compete in the UFC. The WWE actually released a statement acknowledging Lesnar's appearance at UFC 226, and they stated, stay tuned on WWE.com for any updates on Lesnar's WWE contract. Now, here's the odd thing. They mentioned nothing about this on Raw. And remember, Brock Lesnar is the Universal Champion. So in my opinion, I watch both shows simultaneously. I was more drawn to the G1 special. The beatdown between the firing squad and the Bullet Club came off as more authentic than the shenanigans between Cormier and Lesnar. But make no mistake about it, the UFC is a business, right? It's all about entertainment. It happens. So I was still entertained by it. What were your thoughts? What are your thoughts on Brock Lesnar going back to the UFC? And you know that he's a big draw there. On average, just for the record, I haven't even confirmed this. This is just from my own knowledge. I believe about, on average... Seven, eight hundred thousand pay per view buys. So, on average, I don't think anybody even comes close to him because Connor, in the early days, being on pay per view, wasn't drawing those huge numbers. Brock already was. So, very cool. How about an all women's event? Could happen, according to Pro Wrestling Sheet. They're reporting that really to make up. For the women being left off the greatest Royal Rumble ever card that took place in Abu Dhabi, the WWE is strongly considering booking an all-women's event in the fall. Hmm. Would you want to see it? Very intriguing. Monday Night Raw recently set a record that they won't really be proud of. They're not going to be announcing this one. The most recent edition of Raw drew an average of 2.47 million viewers. That makes it the lowest rated episode of all time. While they might not be panicking, this is an indicator that there are problems. Clearly, they cannot deny it at this point. WWE 2K19 has already been well under the promotional banner. AJ Styles will be the cover superstar. They released a Ronda Rousey official pre order bonus trailer. That was earlier in the week, and as expected, very well produced. No surprises there, but actually very emotional. Roddy Piper's voice made an appearance in it. Basically, he was stating how Ronda Rousey is special, and Ronda was there reflecting. Hearing Roddy's voice again provided me with instant goosebumps. It was sad. In my opinion, greatest heel in the history of the business. Got him way too soon. Eric Bischoff returning. He was recently asked by SkySports.com about a potential return to the WWE. You're going to also notice there's a couple returns that could be taking place. Eric Bischoff being one of them. Here's what he had to say. I would love to do it if the situation, uh, which would work out for everybody, a character like mine, there is only so much you can do from a storyline perspective. You can be that heel authority figure which I was for a few years in WWE and WCW. It's interesting. It's, a, it's fun. But after a while, you've kind of done everything you can do creatively. I'm pretty realistic above, about uh, the value of my character. I'd like to manage someone, a young talent that maybe doesn't have the mic skills. I think that would be fun because I can still get heat. He's not wrong. Especially if you listen to 83 weeks with him and Conrad Thompson. They go at it like an old married couple who don't get along. The Rock returning. He was asked on the red carpet promoting his new film, Skyscraper. I can't wait to get back to a WWE ring. People always ask me, what's it like being in a WWE ring? I always tell them there's nothing 
like it. There's nothing like inside a WWE ring because there's a certain live crowd acumen that is second to none. Now, not only that, earlier in the week, during an appearance on Good Morning America, The Rock mentioned that his oldest daughter, Simone, who's now 16, has a goal of becoming a WWE wrestler. If this comes to fruition, if it becomes a reality, Simone would become the first fourth-generation performer in the business, at least that we know of. Man, that would be huge. Dean Ambrose not scheduled for SummerSlam. Now, again, I somewhat question the validity of this, but it's a Twitter account by the name of at WrestleVotes. Now, I will say this. For the record, if you go back historically, they have reported some pretty accurate industry news. And they had the following to say about Dean Ambrose. Getting a few questions regarding Dean Ambrose's return lately. Can't say for certain, but source said not to expect him any time before SummerSlam. September seems more likely at this point. That would be very disappointing. Gold Dust. He's out of action. According to WWE.com, they reported that Goldust underwent surgery on both knees. The report also stated that the surgery was successful, so that's a big plus, and that he is expected to make a full recovery. I can't believe he's still going at this point, especially at a pretty good level. I saw him at a recent house show probably about a year ago, maybe even less than that. He can still perform in the ring. I think he's a few years shy of 50. When is he going to hang it up? Probably when he can't go at the same pace anymore, but evidently he still can. Speaking of another return, former WWE Divas champion Caitlyn, that's a name you haven't heard in a while, she will be returning to the WWE as an entrant in the May Young Classic 2018. So that's the second time they'll be putting this classic on. Let's talk about highlights from the week as I take another swig of Samuel Adams' Summer Ale. You know, if this podcast attracted enough listeners, I would actually get paid to promote this beer and all the other beers that I've consumed during the near 50 episodes of this program to date. How about the opening segment brawl between Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns? At times, a little bit hokey. Roman Reigns took out the entire raw roster, seemingly the entire raw roster, jumping over the top rope. Nevertheless, it was a hot start to Raw, even though it was still the lowest rated Raw in terms of viewership of all time. Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre was a solid match. Drew McIntyre now has the right to be ringside with the match between Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. I'll make predictions on that match and many more later on during my predictions segment. How about the Miz TV segment featuring Team Hell No? I'm excited about that pairing. Andrade Siena Almas versus Sin Cara. The first time Sin Cara's ever made my highlights from the week list. Best match of the week. The Undisputed Era versus Mustache Mountain. All four men told an incredible story and deserve tons of credit for keeping the audience hooked for the entire duration of the match. The way in which Trent Seven sold his injury was brilliant and most importantly, very Believable. Love the psychology there. I'm spoiling it for you if you haven't seen it, but you have Tyler Bate who throws in the towel because his mentor, his older brother, his father figure, Trent Seven, is just screaming in pain. You can feel it radiate through the television. Throws in the towel. Enough of that. Let's get to your questions. It's what fuels this show. And if you have questions at any point in time, all you need to do is ask me on social media. Do not be shy. Whether it's tomorrow or two weeks from now, I will try and feature them on the program. If I don't get to them all, I'll try and kick it to the next episode. Mike Leochi via Facebook. Do you think Brock Lesnar will still be Universal Champion when his UFC fight with Daniel Cormier happens in early 2019. If so, will he walk to the octagon with the title? Great question. Timely, too. He will almost certainly drop the championship before then, but stranger things have happened. It's clear that WWE is open to piggybacking off the attention he receives from the UFC. 
So it's possible, but in a legitimate sport, despite the fact that they have many of their own hokey moments, I can't imagine that they would allow Brock Lesnar to carry a belt to the octagon. Plus, that's not the norm. Fighters do not do that. Edgy McEdralord via Google+. Plus. Who do you think will be the next three people released? I honestly never wish for anybody to lose their job unless they undeniably deserve it. They, they've screwed up badly or they're just a terrible performer all around. He also didn't specify if this is under the full WWE umbrella or specifically geared at the main roster. Since NXT tends to go through far more releases, I'll just look at the main roster. Uh, the Cologne brothers, Primo and Epico, due to the fact, very simply put, they haven't been used in a while. And I believe they're actually going to ask for their release and say, when we have the itch to go wrestle, we'll just do it somewhere else. How about New Japan Pro Wrestling? How about back in Puerto Rico, anywhere? And unfortunately, even though he has the talent, no way Jose. That gimmick will inevitably fall flat. When it does, it's going to be a big crash and burn, similar to Adam Rose, where it just falls off the map and the audience stops caring. Edward via Facebook, and then I'm going to combine that with Matthew's question via Facebook. Both had questions about the Hall of Fame. So Edward, he positioned it as, will slash should the Hall of Fame get an overhaul? Remove undeserving inductees and add those that do. And Matthew asks, who is someone you think deserves to be in the Hall that isn't yet? I don't want to remove anybody. Yes, I mean, instantly there are names like Coco Beware that I could say, I don't know. What kind of impact did he have? All of those larger-than-life figures from the 80s, was he truly one of them? In my mind, no. But then I look at the celebrity wing, and that's just a mess. But I'm going to completely ignore the celebrity wing and, and you know the Warrior Award and a whole bunch of those. It just doesn't make any sense to, to pick those apart. So I'm not going to remove anybody from the Hall of Fame. But let's focus on the names who should be inducted. Sadly, many of them are no longer with us. So you know what that means. It's not going to all happen at once. It's going to be stretched out over years. It's going to be a while before we see them all inducted. I hate giving like my top five or top 10. So maybe I'll give like my top five in no particular order. Here's a name that I don't hear mentioned nearly enough. Rick Martel, long overdue, one of the most underrated performers of all time. Go back and watch his matches with uh, Strike Force as a tag team, as a solo performer, as a heel. And then even in WCW, at a short run there, cut short due to an injury. He is crisp. He is technical. Never really misses the mark. Vader. Ah, he should have been inducted before his death. What a shame. The Undertaker. Retired or not, put the guy in there. He deserves it. He's a general. He's a legend. Arguably the greatest gimmick that shouldn't have ever succeeded, but it did in the business. Owen Hart. Brett. Really took it to Martha, which is Owen's widow recently. And Martha responded just by saying, so disrespectful, so irresponsible. What is Brett talking about? Yes, I protect his legacy, but I still blame the WWE, which is a shame. So if Martha allows it, which I honestly don't ever see it happening, Owen Hart should be in there again. I, I'm just so doubtful it will occur. And how about The Rock? Even though he has noted, yes, I have that desire to come back to the ring. I want to perform again. Put him in there based on the fact that it's going to get a lot of media attention. Bam Bam Bigelow's on my list. Paul Heyman, Triple H, Ivan Koloff, the British Bulldogs. Where are they? Dynamic Kid and, and David Boy Smith. Kane, Brian Pillman. I'm a massive Brian Pillman fan. China, despite the fact she had her adult career, so to speak, post WWE, she should still be in there. Molly Holly, The Big Show, Bruiser Brody, since we're highlighting legends who did not perform under the WWF or WWWF uh, banner, maybe too many W's. And even though it's highly unlikely it's ever going to occur, especially while he's alive, Vince McMahon should go into the Hall of Fame. He'll just never allow it. Kyle Scarf via Twitter. If you had to choose someone to take the strap off of Brock so we can focus on UFC, 
would you lean towards, Rollins, Strowman, or someone else? Easy, Seth Rollins. I've noted the, noted this on past editions of the program. Based on the reaction from the audience, which I may add, should be the judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to pushing talent along with his in-ring work, Seth is clearly ready for that main event role again. He's been there. It worked well. To my knowledge, Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins have only competed in triple threat matches. So imagine the two compete one-on-one and Seth Rollins overcomes the Beast Incarnate. He sets himself up for some great feuds that could even potentially lead to a heel Dean Ambrose returning along with many other possibilities. So I want it on Seth Rollins simply because he's ready. Jeremy via Google Plus. Should WWE performers have an off-season? I don't believe an off-season is the answer, but they certainly deserve more time off to heal, recharge the batteries, and take care of other life commitments. While they are no longer subjected to performing over 300 days a year like what was previously the norm, it's still in the neighborhood of roughly about 250 dates, which is still far too many for top performers. That's a lot of traveling in there, too. If you properly build new stars and feature compelling storylines, your business shouldn't suffer if they aren't featured on a particular house show. Clinton via Facebook. Bobby Lashley versus Roman Reigns. Who do you got at WWE Extreme Rules? Patience, my friend. We're getting to that in a matter of seconds. Predictions. WWE Extreme Rules takes place this coming Sunday, July the 15th from the PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Again, it's a dual-branded show. That means it's going to last about three and a half to four hours, so it will begin at 7 p.m. in the east. That means the kickoff show will air about an hour earlier at 6 p.m. There are 11 matches in total, so let's not waste any time and jump right into them. You have the New Day versus Sanity in a tables match. That is set to air on the kickoff show. Uh, It was just announced recently. So really, this took place because of the pancake eating contest. Sanity put them through a table. I believe Sanity is going to win. That's my prediction because they need the victory more. Finn Balor versus Constable Baron Corbin. I can't believe that's a thing. He wrestles in a vest, in tight pants. Why? So, what's going to happen here? I will note, Finn Balor was one of the mid-card performers featured during the pull-apart brawl between Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns, and I was very disappointed. Based on the crowd reaction and the amount of merch that he sells, Finn Balor should be much higher on the card. But I believe that he's going to win this match. At some point, put the Intercontinental title on him, for God's sakes. It makes sense. My prediction is Finn Balor. Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens in a steel cage match. There is nowhere for Kevin Owens to run or hide. Yet somehow, some way, going against the grain, I am predicting Kevin Owens to win the match. Perhaps he'll go through the steel cage and land on the floor first. Who knows? The Raw Tag Team Championship. Woken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, otherwise known as the Deleter of Worlds. It's wonderful, by the way. Versus the B Team. How did we get it here? How did the B Team actually make it this far? I believe they've been undefeated over the past couple of months, too. But they're not going to win it. My prediction, Woken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt retain the Raw Tag Team Championships. The SmackDown Women's Championship. It is the champ Carmella. Mella is money. Taking on Asuka, the Empress of Tomorrow. So James Ellsworth is back in the picture. That plays a major factor here. But I don't think he's going to play too much of a factor in Asuka not winning the match. I believe that somehow, someway, she will become the new SmackDown Women's Champion, which is long overdue in my eyes. Let's move over to Raw for the Raw Women's Championship. The champion, Alexa Bliss, 
versus Nia Jax. So Nia cashed in her mandated rematch clause for the next pay-per-view. If you recall, Nia was the champion heading into Money in the Bank as she took on Ronda Rousey. She was in a very tight spot, figuratively and literally, with that arm bar. Alexa Bliss showed up, hit the holy hell out of both of them with a briefcase, cashed in to become the new Raw Women's Champion. My prediction is that Alexa Bliss retains because the payoff will be Ronda returning and destroying her. And remember, Ronda is going to be ringside for this match. She's suspended, but she's apparently buying a ticket. I hate that gimmick, by the way. I mean, you're going to give her a ticket. She's Ronda friggin' Rousey. She's going to sit at ringside and probably, I don't know if she's going to hop the rail, but she's definitely going to be involved in the next week or two with Alexa Bliss. For the United States Championship, it is the champion Jeff Hardy defending against Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura repeatedly fell short of winning the WWE Championship. Even recently, luck was not on his side. He was bitten by a police dog. Forced to miss a bunch of dates. But his luck will turn around. Nakamura to become the new United States champion. Jeff Hardy's going through some health issues. Probably needs some time away to heal. There's a lot of miles on that car. The SmackDown Tag Team Championship. The Bludgeon Brothers, the champions taking on the recently reunited and it feels so good team Hell no. Quite the surprise to see Kane back on SmackDown. My heart still says it's going to be Team Hell No emerging victorious, but I'm reading report after report that it's going to be The Miz and Daniel Bryan at SummerSlam, which is next month. So I can't imagine that they're going to put the titles on Kane and Daniel Bryan only for a couple of weeks. So originally my prediction was Team Hell No, And you know what? Screw it. I'm going to stick to it. They're going to become the new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And I think I'm going to be wrong on that one. For the Intercontinental Championship, Dolph Ziggler defends against Seth Rollins in a 30-minute Ironman match. Remember, Drew McIntyre will be ringside. His recent victory over Rollins on Raw secured that ringside spot. That's going to play a factor, and Dolph Ziggler will retain the Intercontinental Championship. Now, I've been reading that this match is going to headline the card, much to the chagrin of Roman Reigns' haters. It's going to be Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley. Now, if you recall, and this could be a bit of a continuity error, although they did address it, it was the fact that Kurt Angle said, hey, we're going to have a multi-man match, and the winner will be the new number one contender. Now, all of a sudden, that's just completely disappeared. He's rescinded it. It's not happening. But there shouldn't be any doubt that the winner of this match will face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. And I believe they're going to lean towards the fresh matchup. Bobby Lashley to defeat Roman Reigns. Perhaps a little wishful thinking on my end. And even though it likely will not headline the card... For the WWE Championship, I'm traditional. I think it should because it is a big title since Brock Lesnar is nowhere to be found. AJ Styles, the champion, versus Rusev. To me, this feud has fallen a little bit flat just based on the fact they haven't invested a lot of time and energy into building it. Rusev won the number one contendership in a gauntlet match. And now this is really his main event opportunity. But he's not going to be the one to defeat AJ Styles. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It will be Samoa Joe. So that means AJ Styles retains the WWE Championship. And those are my predictions for Extreme Rules taking place this coming Sunday, July the 15th. Hope you enjoyed another jam-packed edition of of Ask the Top. If you would be so kind, subscribe to me on YouTube. Follow me all over social media. You can now listen to the show on Spreaker and hopefully soon on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever else podcasts are available. Until next time, happy trails to you. Until we meet again.